First of all, what drove you into acting? Was it a movie you saw, or an actor, a particular actor? Or what drove you into that career? Um, yeah, what, what got me into acting, it was, it was a late start because where I grew up in Australia, it was very working class, very... Um, <coughs> Um, to, to say you wanted to be an actor was ridiculous. So uh, I, I, I went and joined the army and I, I did a bunch of things. Um, but the acting bug was always there and I started to do community theater. And, um, and a Shakespearean actor who sort of took me under his wing, he said, uh, you know, you can do this for a living. And a little light went off. It's like, whoa, what? <laughs> gave me a commission so I went and got classically trained and uh, yeah I think growing up it was it was um, the first time I saw the taming of the shrew at primary school I was in grade seven and all the other kids were walking out going like well, that was stupid it was ridiculous and I was on fire I was I couldn't believe what I'd just seen and there was some magic that was there. So I guess my, my first love was seeing something on stage, on the theater. Okay, that's yeah. the vocation from the uh, theater play. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh. The, the effect was, I, I was, yeah, I, was, I felt alive. <laughs> and, then, and then there were different films over the years that, uh, that really profoundly affected me. Um, and, but it was, it was a big thing to decide I'm going to be an actor. <laughs> that was, you know, I thought, my parents were, they, they never stood in my way, but they, you know, they just thought, well, we're going to be worried for the rest of our lives. <laughs> because you got a lot of great directors, Peter Weir, mm. uh, a lot of great actors. Mel Gibson, I know Mel Gibson is American, but... Uh, yeah, he, yeah, he was trained in Australia, yeah. Hugh Jackman, you said, which means so, okay. Yeah. So it was really the play and the vocation. Uh, I was, think, yeah, I was that generation as well <coughs> where um, Australian actors were starting to filter onto the international stage. And uh, it, it became something, before that, it, it just didn't seem like a, a proper vocation for an <laughs> Australian. Um, you know, in Australia, sport is everything. Uh, <laughs> the arts, yes, but... But not really from where I grew up. It wasn't. That's not something that you make a living out of. Um, so it was. A, it was a big gamble. Um, my parents are still worried. They'll be worried until, <laughs> until the very end. <laughs> uh, having played in a lot of TV shows and now a leading role in the So franchise, Jigsaw, uh, is it still hard for an actor um, to go from TV to the movie industry? Because. There was a time where it was like for yeah. David Duke of New or uh, kind of who is a great actor, but to have success in a in a movie like you did recently with the Jigsaw. Right. Yeah, I think I think it used to be very polarized that uh, if you did television, you, you sort of you didn't have a yeah you didn't have a chance with film, and if you did film, to do television would take you out of that realm. I think the industry is changing year by year now. It's accelerating it in its change with um, with digital media outlets, the Hulu and Amazon and Netflix. Um, I think these days, certainly in Australia, I think you had to, if, if you want to make a living as an actor in Australia, you had to be able to do it all. Um, and you take whatever work you can get. Um, and then in the in a greater career, I think those I think those walls have uh, are, are being broken down. I think that we are seeing um, actors jump to and from uh, film, television. Um, I, I don't think I don't think that's as polarized as it once was. Okay, so yeah. you don't have the the same challenge as uh, some of the actors like Bruce Willis who came from a TV show. Right. I know. Now he's a yeah. big movie star, but uh, he had to struggle and uh, Clint Eastwood, all those names. Yeah, George Clooney. Just only few of them uh, have made uh, their name in, uh, in the movie industry. Yeah, and the funny thing <coughs> is, is the, the, the industry seems to, or each person's journey seems to make up its own rules um, as it goes. You know, um, some actors become, they just hit gold in a television show and their popularity skyrockets and so the they're looked at for films. Um, other other people are just just never never hit that gold show mm -hmm. that that goes you know like a Game of Thrones that just <laughs> throws you into this other stratosphere or a Walking Dead. Um, yeah, I I think I think that's in the realm of the fates. 
you know, uh, in, in, in the muses. Um, and, but as, as an actor, I think, um, you know, you just want to be ready to grab that opportunity when it, when it comes along. The, uh, the great thing about this life and the horrible thing about this life is you never know what's around the corner. So, um, uh, even just, just before, uh, Kevin got in touch with me, I had no idea that I would be in Paris, uh, at this time in June. <laughs> it was, I had no idea. So this is, you know, um, the, the curse of this life is the unpredictability of it. It's hard mm -hmm. to, hard to plan your life a bit, but, uh, but then you do find yourself in some extraordinary places. Uh, would you like to keep playing both like some artists doing with uh, Taboo and uh, I think it's uh, Peaky Blinders or just focus on your movie career from now? Uh, I, you know, I might be wrong in saying this, but I, I don't think un unless you're in that stratosphere where you can truly just say, well, that's all I want to do. I, I've set, I've certainly never been in the position where I can just say, oh, I only want to do film. Um, I know a lot of actors don't like to admit that sort of thing, but uh, I, I try and stay open to whatever comes my way. I mean, I like to work. I don't like not working. Uh, it's not bouncing off the walls. So um, whether it's a, whether it's a film or television or you know or getting back to the theatre, which I hadn't I hadn't walked the floorboards for quite a while, but last year I was able to get back uh, on the stage. If you know if if the story and the character is something that really appeals to me. And then the opportunity, because there's, there's a lot of people that need to agree that you're right for that role. When those stars line up, then, you know, it makes for a, makes for a great job. But um, no, I, I, certainly, I certainly have never been in the position where I'm sort of, mm, you, you know. No, I, I just, I just want to work. Okay, and if you had the choice, if you, if you had the choice at uh, one point in your career, uh, would you rather do indie films as well as popular blockbusters like uh, Jake Gyllenhaal or uh, DiCaprio are doing, or would you go the opposite, like Joaquin Phoenix, who choose to do only uh, that hardy films? It's right uh, with kind of uh, filmmaker like Paul Thomas Anderson or uh, yeah, more of the films. If you had the, if time. you had the, that peak of your career and you. You're, okay, I'm only going to do films I want to do with uh, good filmmakers, not good filmmakers, but uh, you see what I mean? I yes, I, uh, I think I see what you mean. I think Kind of not popular or, or I won't say cheap because I like popular movies, I like blockbusters when they are well made, but right. uh, there are two kind of, two kind of movies, but... Uh, it's like, uh, yeah, I, I know the two different types of cinema. Yes. Um, I... <clears throat> Once again, for me, uh, it, it, it really comes down to the story. If the story's great and the character's great and the opportunity mm -hmm. is there, um, I certainly don't know many actors that really can just choose uh, exactly um, where they're going to go. Um, you know, I, I, I like to roll with the opportunities that, that come my way. So I, I, don't think, um, I don't think I'd ever go like, oh, well, that's a blockbuster, I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Or that's in that's too indie for me. Uh, I think uh, you know who the director or whoever's making the film is a big thing, and then it's the story and the character and and then the and then the opportunity. So no, I, I don't think I'm I'm certainly not even in the position to uh, be able to say oh well I only want to do blockbusters or anything. It's uh, you know and the world we live in. Um, <laughs> I, I, I read the story just like an audience, um, and if I if I can't put the script down, and if I see that character and something in there, then, then and if I'm hooked, then uh, it's it's probably a story that I'd love to tell. Uh, is there one director in particular you would like to uh, you you dream working with? Oh. So many. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, they need to know this. Um, I think, I think right now, uh, someone, I guess because they are doing a, 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 another Predator, is Shane Black is someone that I would love to work with. I just think that the films that he does, there's a, there's a, 
he does great action and there's a quirky tongue in cheek there and I think um I think he among many <laughs> many he has directors so many things because in Iron Man 3 uh, pulling what he pulled with the character of Ben Kingsley right which was supposed to be that big menace and he's just a, a poor actor right, addicted right. It was so bold yeah uh, yeah and and there's such a tongue in cheek <laughs> thing there um no, I, I think Shane Black knows how to do action, but he also knows how to turn something on its head. And he's an entertaining director, you know. He, I think I've, I've been entertained by everything he's done. And a lot of people say, you know, different films change their lives over the years. I still watch Predator. It's still one of my favorite oh. films. And I know he <laughs> didn't direct it, but he was certainly a part of it. Um, I watched it maybe a month ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> It just, yeah, I, I, it was, that was one of those, one of those, that was one of those films that I saw way too young with my dad, but it's <laughs> always man, it's always a good memory I've got with my dad. That we, <laughs> we were walking back from the cinema and my dad said, you're not going to tell your mom about that one, are you? Okay, <laughs> Shane Black, excellent choice, excellent choice. Uh, I, I don't know how, but I saw you in, a, I see you, I imagine you in a David Lynch movie and uh, I know that Kevin has a lot of, uh, as a David Lynch touch right. uh, in his, uh, I saw Vesper too, and uh, there's right. a David Lynch kind of a definitely, yeah, yeah. definitely. And I, I think, I think just like David Lynch, I think Kayvon likes to play around with reality, yeah, um, and 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 time jumps, but certainly um, loves to, you know, you you. I think with David Lynch and with Kayvon, you know, you're sort of wondering whose head you're in, as a, as an audience. Um, and it's it's fun to try and work out whose head you're in in a David Lynch mm. uh, thing. Mm -hmm. Yes, David Lynch is definitely on my list. <laughs> David Lynch, Shane Black. Yeah. David Fincher, by the way. David Fincher, yes. absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Yes. The Mind Hunter is a terrific uh, TV show. Absolutely. I mean, I auditioned yes. for that. I I jumped yeah. at the chance to try and you know get on that uh, to get on that show and thoroughly enjoyed uh, watching the series when it came out. Um, and, and it, it's it, there are directors like that that um, I'm in love with their writing. I'm in love with their words. David Fincher is definitely someone. He's that writing with his camera. It's, it's yeah, really brilliant. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. And there's as, as an actor, there are there are definitely writers out there that you you just kill to say those words. <laughs> you know, I've been I've been lucky to work with um, a number of those uh, writer executive producers that either have their own pentameter or have their own voice, and it's. It's so much fun, mm. you know, to um, to inhabit, to be able to say those words, and then uh, you know, and when that job goes away, you almost have to have a, a bit of a, a bit of a wake, a bit of a funeral to say goodbye to that to that character. You're looking only in the uh, United States, or Australia, or are you looking everywhere? Uh... I'm open. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm open to everywhere. I mean, something fr like this coming yeah. from uh, France, I would never have seen coming in a million years. But you, predominantly, I always keep um, the throwing throwing my hat into the ring for things mm -hmm. in in America and Australia. But um, it was uh, it's it's always really interesting because you never know where your work is being shown. So um, when when Kayvon got in touch with me and we were talking, that he was telling me how the Glades, you know, when the Glades was shown yeah. here, that he would watch it. You know, after school or something like that, and it's so it's so bizarre to to think um, to think who's watching who's watching your work and where and um, and and whether that translates. Um, so yeah, it's uh, if if a great film came through from Iceland, I would I would jump on that in a second. <laughs> That's okay for me. All right, thank okay you for me Thank too. you so much. <laughs> thank you so much.